And so we begin this video in Hollywood, California. It is my first time being this close to that iconic sign. This is pretty awesome. Hello, I am Tampa J, and you have clicked on the filming locations for A Nightmare on Elm Street Part 4, The Dream Master, released in 1988. A couple years ago, back in 2020, I originally made plans to come make this video and see these locations, but we all know what happened. Things got put aside, things have changed. I've gone many different places since then, but now, right now, today, I'm finally doing this. A Nightmare on Elm Street, one of my absolute favorites, right up there next to Friday the 13th. This will be my first go at any A Nightmare on Elm Street filming location. So this is a big deal. I'm very nervous, got a lot of ground to cover today in the Los Angeles area, starting here in Hollywood. We're gonna go out to Pasadena. We're gonna go down to Venice at some point. I'm hoping to get it all done. There's a lot of running around here. And Los Angeles traffic, I have learned so fast. It's like Freddy Krueger. It's gonna kill you. On my way to the first A Nightmare on Elm Street Part 4 filming location, but I had to stop here because I recognized this filming location from Halloween 1978. Just passing by, welcome to the main gates of Smith Grove Sanitarium. All right, now stopping in Burbank. Here we are at the corner of Oak Street and Beechwood. Kristen is driving to Alice's house to pick her and her brother Rick up for school. She's gonna give them a ride to school. She makes a right here onto Oak off of Breechwood and pulls right into the driveway. That right over there is Alice's house. Let's go take a look. And we're approaching it. Here we go, my reaction real time. Oh my gosh, it looks the same as it was in the movie. It looks like there might be some kind of construction going on. Alice's house from Nightmare 4. Oh my gosh. Here's the widest angle you see of the house as Kristen's pulling into the gate up the driveway. Notice the brick. And I believe the gate is still the same. Oh my gosh. It's all the same, it hasn't been changed. But the house looks pretty much identical. There was more ivy growing up the chimney. This is a big deal, this being my favorite nightmare on Elm Street. The scenes were filmed inside and outside. There, there's the garage where Rick had his karate dojo right here. And before Kristen pulls up in that opening scene here at Alice's house, when she makes a right, a brief screen grab, you can see her eyes in the rear view mirror, but the house to the left, that house, is right here on the edge of Oak and Beechwood. You can make out this right in here in the screenshot. Check it out, there's a screenshot. Notice the roof, it's a little different angle, but that's right there, just confirming that she made a right, right here, and then a quick left into the driveway. But here we are on Beechwood, taking the right as Tuesday Night, who played Kristen, not Patricia Arquette, which played Kristen in the third film. Notice that house over there as I showed you before. Her song was playing as she took the corner here and she pulls in right here and drives straight to the back and parks in front of the garage. And that opening scene um, takes place. Actually, I think this has been added right here. This wasn't here during the time of the film. So I'm placing this screenshot of the house into frame so that you can see the house has been addition. And if you look here today, you can see that little building to the left of the window has been addition. Oh, check this out. Now that I'm examining this a little more carefully, they moved the garage. You see it's a straight path from the driveway here, and they added that addition. Check this out. If you were to go straight through that addition, you wouldn't go towards the garage. It's been shifted to the left. All right, I'll put that into frame so you can just look close, use your imagination. Check that out. Now look, Kristen would have had to park like over that way. Oh wow, they moved the garage, that's amazing. These scenes filmed at the house, this is the back, that's after she parked the Volkswagen, the camera would have been pointing back at us. Again, the car right there, there it is. 
and right through that window that's where the dining room table was in the movie when Alice uh, sets the salad down on the table and her father asks, I've been working all day and all you have for me is rabbit food something along those lines it makes like a rabbit face but yeah that was actually filmed inside that front room right there and right a corner to the back right is the back porch where Rick jumps out of the second story window on avoid all contact day because when dad's popping aspirin you want to avoid him like the plague I just want to point out that someone uh, cracked and left their phone right here at Alice's house oh no Freddy's calling for you. And because I go to so many horror conventions, I've been able to meet so many uh, actors that were involved in this film. I have a book with me of one of the set creators, a specific book that was written about the Dream Master. And I have that with me, I'll, I'll share it with you. And here's that book, Behind the Screams, The Dream Masters Revealed. If you're a fan of this film, I recommend this book. This is how I'm tracking down most of these locations today. And I'm gonna throw in a few fun facts for you. Uh, shout out to Mick Strawn, uh, who autographed this book for me, and I, I got a picture with him at Tampa Bay Screams, along with Nick Benson, another special effects artist that worked on Nightmare 4. Uh, and that same convention, I actually got Lisa Wilcox uh, interviewed her in that video. So check out my Tampa Bay Screams video. I'll put a link in the description below. But thanks to this book, which I'll show you more later, uh, we're finding all these today. Okay, for this next filming location, I'm gonna wear this backpack. I'm hoping this makes me look younger and less suspicious. Beauty school dropout, go back to high school. Venice High School, where they filmed Grease. Also, welcome to Springwood High from Nightmare Part 4. Yep, same filming location. All right, so I got my backpack on. Most of the scenes filmed here at Venice High School were back to the right at a former parking lot, which is now this brand new building back here. Venice High School, home to the gondoliers. Now this should look familiar if you've seen Greece. There's a very specific shot you see at the front of this building, the main office. Now you don't really see this angle in Nightmare. You do see this in the background. We'll get there when we get there. A majority of the scenes filmed here were filmed out there. All right, so over this way, camera would have been reversed but you can definitely make out this above ground second level walkway behind them in the scenes all right so I found the hallway where they're taking the girl out on the stretcher these are the doors that the paramedics came out with the gurney right here check this out they actually come out right here they rolled the gurney over this way and the ambulance was parked right there. So the gurney comes out this way. Behind me would be the ambulance. And here's a shot of the Fantastic Four standing right here in this archway. You can make out the building behind them then and now. Also the wall to the right. Debbie, Rick, Dan, and Alice standing right here in this doorway. And then Alice runs off into this hallway eventually right there oh wow yeah there you go right there so cool check this out here as the gurney is being put into the ambulance the van would have been right in front of us and you can make out the building behind it then and now that's pretty cool also, Danny Zuko was walking around here. The T-Birds. The ambulance would have been parked here. This is where it would have been loaded, right there, just to give you full perspective of this location. That's where that scene was filmed. Kristen, I'm sorry, Alice, running down that hallway through those doors. I'm gonna walk over here. This building over here was built in 2020. I know because I studied Google imagery this was where the former parking lot was in this vicinity where everyone came to school when you first see the high school where everyone pulls in. Behind Kristen, the Volkswagen, way yonder is the main office building in that walkway. 
Uh, you can see it here today. Okay, so the camera must have been in the same angle as it was picking up all the filming all the scenes here in the high school. I'm standing in the former parking lot. Turn slightly to my right. Okay, check this out. Screenshot. This is where the kid jumps the curb. Ollie's off the curb there. Notice the windows and the building behind him. Check this out. He would have ollied right there. Okay, and then okay, this is the former driveway through here to the parking garage here, or to the parking lot. And then a quick turn as Kristen's entering the parking lot, Alice in the car as well. You can make out these windows. Right here, they were pulling in this way. There you go. And the building to the left, right up in here, it's painted gray today. Keep this in mind, this was painted blue in the screenshot you're about to see. Check it out. I'm almost in the same spot. Here you go. Keep looking. Check out the office building up and to the right too. It's incredible. So I'm standing in about the vicinity where everyone's standing conversating after everyone comes to it in the parking lot. And I can pinpoint that because Dan parks his truck right here because you can make all of this out behind him as he walks up to Alice or as she's having a daydream. You are one major league hunk, is what Alice says to Dan. Notice this window right here. Actually, this just this whole thing right here. Keep that in mind. Behind them in the screenshot, you can make out those windows. Here you go again. Zoom out, put things into perspective. The parking lot was right here where this new building is. This was built a couple years ago. Here you go to put things into perspective. This is the Nightmare High School, part four. This is amazing. I found where Kristen was burning that heater. It's right here in the same spot. Check out the building behind her. All right, got it? Here you are today. It's this building, right near where Handsome Dan parked, right there. Some very funny scenes filmed here, Robert England dressed as the nurse. I pulled that off. There's no signs posted that I couldn't come inside. Just kept it very cool and kept calm and I was respectful. So there you go. I was able to get you the locations from Venice High School. Tell me more, tell me more. I'm really looking forward to this one. I know I've said that before, but I'm super stoked about this next location. And who knew Venice had an Elm Street? Ha 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 ha. Randomly passing it too, awesome. 1023 Fair Oaks Avenue, right here in the heart of South Pasadena. This theater legendary. Not only a nightmare part four, but also Scream 2. And this is where they filmed Thriller, the music video, Michael Jackson. A few among many, those are the ones I know. Just a couple months ago, actually back in October, a few months back, Chris, the girl, and I passed right by here as we were tracking down filming locations to Halloween, 1978. Welcome to Springwood and welcome back to Haddonfield. Here we are at the Rialto. I'm gonna break down these screenshots, but first we gotta get a little closer. This is awesome. This is my favorite. It's a theater and it's a nightmare on Elm Street. This is my favorite scene. And we are about to begin at the Rialto, but first I wanna point out this star before the ticket booth, Centennial Celebration, 100 years on June 4th, 1988. That's right around the time that A Nightmare on Elm Street Part Four came out. That's pretty cool. And the scene begins at the Rialto as you see Alice, who is dreaming, walking up to the ticket booth. You can make out the corner of the ticket booth to the right inside the screenshot, and also you can make out the curb over there. That's the corner of Oxley and Fair Oaks right over there. And here's the ticket booth. I'm just gonna show you the front doors. I'm gonna break this down oh so carefully. I'm gonna show you each screenshot, but here's the ticket booth. This is actually in the movie. This is, this is awesome. This is so cool. And the next shot is of the marquee. The camera pans down exactly like this. I'm, I'm creating the shot, recreating it. Actually, I gotta go a little bit this way. 
camera goes like this and Alice walks into frame to my right and then you see the ticket booth. Okay. It's so cool how everything matches up. Check out Alice walking up to the ticket booth to enter the theater and breaking it down shot by shot, second by second. Here you go, Alice furthering up to the glass. The same booth. It's incredible. And there you are, the lady issuing the ticket. There's a phone to the left behind her. The phone's not there today, but there's definitely a spot where it used to hang right there. This is exact. It's incredible. And here are the scenes that I believe were filmed inside. Reminds me of the Tampa Theater back home. There's Alice Lisa Wilcox. There she is being sucked into the screen. And to meet Freddie into the restaurant that she works at. A very cool scene. She meets her older self there. And then the pizza comes in. One of the main reasons, one of the biggest reasons, of course, I like this film is because there's pizza with soul toppings. Oh, <laughs> oh, I know that disgusts a lot of people, but man, that was hilarious. And hello, Los Angeles. Here we go, moving east of downtown on the five. Use the right two lanes to take exit 135B, then take go. right to stay on exit 135B. You got it! And for the next filming location, we come to 204 Evergreen. Here are the main gates of Evergreen Cemetery. This is where they film the funeral scenes. Watch ahead. Ground hours, Monday through Sunday, 9 to 4. The gate is locked at 4. Well, we have plenty of time. It is. 10:15. I'm making great time so far. And before we get to the location for the funeral spots in Nightmare 4, I want to point out that this cemetery was also used in the original in Nightmare on Elm Street and also I believe for the third movie, Dream Warriors, specifically showing you this building because Nancy and her mom actually walk out of this building down these steps right here. Actually, I'll just throw in a screenshot. Why not? Why I'm here from the first A Nightmare on Elm Street movie there you go check it out right here this building right here in the middle of the cemetery and I'm specifically looking for the location of Rick's funeral the last funeral scene out here during Nightmare 4 I think I've almost located it I know it's here in section B bingo thanks to this headstone right here Andrews I was able to pinpoint from this screenshot the widest angle you see of that funeral, Rick's funeral. Notice in the far left hand corner, that headstone, Andrews. To the left of that giant pine tree, that evergreen right there to the trunk. Notice the steeple way out in the background near the intersection, the giant steeple looking thing and also the tree to the left. And of course, again, the Andrews tombstone pinpointing from the screenshot check it out the steeple way out behind them the pine trees to the left and to the right and the Andrews tombstone the funeral was right there right there and here you go a wider angle just to show you where Rick's funeral was hello baby that was actually kind of scary the first time you watched it you didn't expect him to come back there and walking up to where the funeral was right here in this area coming in at a different angle makes sense why they had it right here there's a there's a little bit of room or more room the tombstones around here are from the early 1900s and I'm using this screenshot here Dan Alice and Debbie notice right behind Debbie there there's a headstone with a cross here we are today here's that cross they would have been standing right here and also some of these other tombstones in the background match up as well. Okay, shifted a little to the right. I was a little off, but check out the cross again. And also the tombstone to the right above it, out in the distance, it's got uh, Japanese on it. There's a lot of Japanese people buried in the cemetery. Fun fact there, by the way, but specifically right there to the right in the screenshot, you can make out those two headstones. Yeah, there you go. 
and we're standing right here. Dan, Alice, and Debbie. And here's the angle of the backside of where the funeral was, the angle you don't see in the movie again, right in this vicinity. I parked my car right up there. Again, right out there, the funeral spot, right in that location. This is a great spot. It's nice and calm out here, nice and peaceful. For me to bring up this book again by Mick Strawn, all about Nightmare Part 4. There's a chapter, chapter 3, called Junkyard Dogs, and it's about it's about 25 pages, and it talks about how they built the set for the junkyard. You can buy this book on Amazon, but I'll just show you just to check it out for yourself. There's all kinds of screenshots and backstories and interviews, even Robert England's interviewed in this book. Here's chapter three, Junkyard Dogs, and there's some photographs of the actual building of the scene, the set, and they did this at an actual salvage yard in the valley. Actually, all it says is this was filmed at the former site of the old Los Angeles city dump somewhere out in the valley. There, there you go, there's a good photo there of them building the set of the junkyard scene, which is one of the most fantastic scenes of the film. Check it out here. Shout out to Mick, uh, very cool fellow. Had the privilege of meeting him uh, back a couple years ago. There's a photo of Mick right there. If you want to know all about this movie, uh, all the finer details, all the deep cuts, no pun intended, check out the Dream Masters Revealed. There's a pretty cool shot of Robert England without makeup. Looks like they're practicing for that scene there with the bench press. And here's all kinds of special effects picks from when they were filming it. Brooke Thies, who played Debbie, all the molds of her head here. Pretty cool shots, a little sneak peek of what you can own yourself. There you go. I really enjoyed this. He signed it for me, Tampa J, Florida man. I never met one in the wild, much less at a horror convention. That was at Tampa Bay Screens back in 2021. All right, now it's time to head to the next filming location, but first I have to always do this. I came in peace, I leave in peace. Don't follow me home, everyone. It's good to see you, respectfully. I'll see you later. Much ahead, everyone. Don't follow me home for the next filming location. We come to Serrano Avenue and I'd like to congratulate myself on the one heck of a parallel parking job I just had to do. Squeezed on in there. Oh yeah, I did it. Okay, walking up across the street here, across from this driveway, back in 87 when they were filming the movie, this house right here was an empty lot. This is 433 South Serrano. That is where they built the house. Serrano Avenue is Elm Street. All right, use your imagination. Here you go, today, but once was the Elm Street house. And the move actually begins here as Kristen is dreaming. Now you have to use your imagination because this was an empty lot where they built the facade of the original Elm Street house. So anytime you saw that house in this movie, it wasn't the original house. It was built right here. And I read that in Behind the Screams once again by Mick Strong. This is the lot and there's quite a few things I can show you to confirm this location. Okay, look in the distance of this screenshot behind the girls past the street. Look at that house. You see it? Okay. Remember that house. Here you go today. There is that house. The windows and the porch over the door right there. The railing. That's a dead giveaway right there. This is across the street from the former site of the Elm Street house. Okay, you see this house right here? I'm going to show you a screenshot from the movie in a second. But remember the windows upstairs especially the two in the center the little ones okay Kristen's mom on delay Kristen on delay on delay she's beeping the horn there in the movie oh that's such an annoying uh that always annoyed me on delay but you can see that house right behind her she's parked right here on the road on Serrano on delay so all those houses I just showed you are across the street that scene right here in front of the Elm Street house when Dan and Rick walked to the door, peeked inside, 
that was filmed right here on Serrano. And we come to probably the nicest of the neighborhoods of all the filming locations we've shown so far. Welcome to the south side of Holly. Wood, 450 June Street, Kristen Parker's house. Hasn't changed a wink. Right up there, that window, that was Kristen's room. Oh, that's where we saw the flames as Alice and Rick were running down the sidewalk here, running up to her room, and it was too late. She had been burned by Freddy. How about that for a nightmare? Here's the screen grab. Not much has changed. The driveway, exactly the same. Check it out, here you go today. Also, the railing here, the steps, they would have ran this way, down the sidewalk this way. The camera kind of sweeps over as they're running up to the door when it's too late. Here's a screenshot of then. Notice the top window above the main door. All fiery. That's Kristen's room. Here you are today. Melrose? Like Melrose Place? Nah. <laughs> okay, randomly passing by the Peterson building one day, much ahead. I've been dying to get in there. Isn't that an awesome building? That's amazing. All right, parked my car, walking up to the corner here to the next location. I thought these trees were really wicked looking. Really cool. Okay, it's up here on the right. Crave Inn. All right, real excited about this one. Welcome to Crave Inn. 4243 Overland Avenue here in Culver City, just a few blocks up from Sony Studios. I passed it on the way here. This is the diner where Alice worked at in Nightmare 4. And there was quite a few scenes filmed here. I believe this was just the exterior. It looks like the interior scenes were done on a set, a mock-up of the interior. Although, looking in there, the counter set up kind of in the same area, but I do believe just because of the dream sequence in the diner later via when Alice enters through the theater, I believe that was all a set. And this is a good time to cross the road to set up the first shot you see of Cafe Loren, or AKA Crave Inn, like Wes Craven. Dan's truck, you see the bumper coming in on this screenshot to this parking space. This is the exact parking spot where he parks. He had that dirt bike, yellow dirt bike, in the back of his classic red truck, which you'll see in the next shot. But here you go, shot for shot almost. This is the same spot. Check out the front doors, the little hashtag, the curb over here, that light pole beyond, not light pole, but electric pole beyond the current uh, Cafe Laurent today. Let me pull it back in about right there. There you go, right here today. Amazing. And there's that yellow dirt bike I was talking about, that screenshot. Pay close attention to the building. Here you are. There you go, look at that. For continuity, if this was not shot here, they did a great job, because you see that little coffee cup? That's the inside. On the outside, Right there, that coffee cup can be seen there too. So maybe they did film in there. I'll get a little closer. It smells great downwind here. Whatever they're cooking up in there in Cafe Lorette, man, that smells great. Come on, we have to go. I'm driving Alice's line as she meets Dan right here at his truck as she comes around the corner. I believe four times during the movie, they're reliving a deja vu dream sequence. This is one of my favorite parts of the movie right here. They realize it. He's got us going in circles. There you go, right here. We've got to go. And they speed off again. But this time, it works. One of my most anticipated, most excited for to visit filming locations to this day. I had to take a photo right here in front of Craven. 
Hey, I can use some coffee. Okay, I took a gander inside. I was specifically looking at the door frames. Now, there's a lot of people in there, so I couldn't really film. But I got myself a coffee inside and took a look. I don't think they filmed in there, just because the innards of the doors are a lot different than you see in the screenshots. Dan's truck was parked right here. There's a couple shots where you camera about this way. So Alice comes out. Out of all the towns in America I had to move to, I had to move to the Bermuda Triangle. I believe that was Dan's line as he was leaning up against this truck right here. And just a block away from Crave Inn, not too far, this is 10472 Fairgott Drive. This is Debbie's house, played by Brooke Thies. This is the house they keep pulling up and then going in and reliving, doing the circle. Freddy's got us running in circles and going back to the Crave Inn. Here's the screenshot of Alice running towards Debbie's house. Notice the wicked tree and the lamppost to the right. Also, the house matches up a little different. There's bars on the windows now. Oh wait, there was bars on the other one. Okay. The windows, the curb, everything matches up. This house has not changed so much. There you go. Then and now, walking away from that house right there, to get to Crave Inn, you would actually take a left up here and go down about a block. Here you go, passing Crave Inn again. One more time. I should probably mention that I'm filming this video on Friday the 13th. I'm doing a nightmare on Elm Street on Friday the 13th. Just thought about that. All right, welcome to Ken Malloy Harbor Regional Park in Long Beach. We make LA a better place. Here we go. And welcome to the location where the beach scene was filmed. Freddy coming aboard shore. Kristen is sunbathing. The little girl making the castle on the beach and Freddy comes in like Jaws with his claw, his fingers, coming through out of the water into the sand and the castle explodes and Freddy is wearing Ray-Ban sunglasses, or at least he puts them on. That, that scene was filmed out here somewhere. I am trying to locate it. I think I have an idea. I think it might be on the north side, down this way, just from a couple of screenshots and looking at an aerial view of the lake. So here we go. Also, there's a, a whole entire chapter devoted to this one location, this one spot. Again, behind the screens. Life's a beach. And then you die. There you go, an entire chapter, chapter six. Hey, goosey, 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 goosey. Just passing by. Okay, this is starting to look more like it. Just because of that tree line across the way there from the screenshots. There's definitely a tree line. Okay, I've got a theory. You see that palm tree in there? Oh, there's a couple palm trees in here. No freaking way. I think I found the spot. Now, 30 years, 35 years have gone by. That tree line over there, okay. I think I'm onto something. I think this was the beach. It's all grown up. But there's a couple palm trees in there, okay. So there's a tree line across there. There's a couple palm trees here. And over here, right in this area, you can make out like a dam. So I'm gonna look on the map again and see if I see airily a dam kind of where I'm standing that goes across this way. I think I think I see one. Holy cow, look at this. This is the spot right here. There's that dam. You see what I'm saying? Also in this screenshot, paused it just right behind Kristen laying on the beach towel. You can make out the road and cars behind her. Here's that road today. Now I'm, I'm thinking right down here in this vicinity is where all the sand was brought in and there are still palms in the vicinity. Oh my gosh, this is it. Now all this has grown up in the last 35 years, so use your imagination. The tree line, this is where Freddy came. Like Jaws with his claw threading through the water and then eventually into the sand. 
Not claiming those are the same palm trees, but maybe they spawned from the old ones that were here. These could have been brought here and left here just from Nightmare Part 4. That's that's cool to think. Oh, sorry, duck. Were you watching? Quack, quack, quack. If it weren't for that dam cutting through the water, I don't think I could have located it. The palm trees right behind me. This is it. This is the spot. Amazing. It's all, look what 35 years does right here. I was trying to find, if I could find like the sand that was still left here. It's probably long gone. It's probably under, underneath the ground. And if you're looking for this location, come to the far north end parking lot. And it's right down over here, behind this rock in front of these benches, this area. The lake right behind me. This is where they filmed it. And these are the trees across the lake, as you see in the background of that scene. Just at a different angle. Beautiful spot out here. I've seen a lot of Los Angeles I would have never seen before if it wasn't for tracking down these filming locations today. And I got them all done. That is crazy. It is just shy of four o'clock. And I've got, I've got a couple more hours of daylight, maybe an hour or so. And for the next filming location, we come near Griffith Park. This is an aqueduct centennial garden, by the way. The very last seed was shot right here when Dan and Alice walk off into the sunset, basically, this fountain. This is the Mulholland fountain. It's not working right now. Back in 87 when they were filming this movie, this park was in a little better shape. It is currently under construction. If there was water coming up out of that fountain, this is what it would look like. This is the very last shot of the movie before the credits start. Actually, there you go right there. And you can definitely make out the shape of the fountain compared to the then screenshot. This is it. And to the left of Dan, you can make out the pattern on the concrete, here you go today. There you go, just to further show that it was filmed here. It's pretty cool. And notice in the background of the still shots, there's a white split rail fence way up on the hill. That hill is back here. Alice and Danny first walk into the fountain on that side, near Riverside. It appears they immediately walk out this exit of the rotunda here so this is where they exited the circle right here this particular one right here all right keep off no trespassing can't go in there this park's a mess there you go Mahalan fountain the last scene all right this building up on the right the large building hopefully you can see it right up here that is the LA Dream Center. I've been on top of the roof back in 2007. I was here with my church and we were in town for a convention and we took a tour of the Dream Center. Can't really see it, dang it. But up there, I'll show you, the, there it is right there. I'll show you a photo of me standing on top of that roof back in 2007. And there's a nice picture of uh, the skyline behind me of Los Angeles and also I'm holding a Coke which I bought at the Dream Center. And on that tour, they said that there was a scene filmed inside the Dream Center. I don't know which film, I can't confirm this. I've been searching for this information for a long time, but they said that there was a film from one of the A Nightmare on Elm Street uh, movies filmed inside that LA Dream Center. Just passing it randomly, thought I'd throw it here in the video because it, uh, it pertains to the subject matter. I've been on top of that building before. It was, it was a pretty cool experience. And now, back in Hollywood. All right, I think you know where I'm at. Here at 1428 Genesee. As soon as I clear this hedge, I will take my first look ever. This is the first time I've been here. At the original, A Nightmare on Elm Street house. Oh my gosh. Oh, this is amazing. Hey, I thought the door was red. Oh, they painted it. Oh my gosh. Can't believe I'm here right now. What is my life right now? Nancy's house. 
Also, this is where Johnny Depp began his career. I think that was his house over there. <laughs> I would love one day to see all of the original A Nightmare on Elm Street locations with these eyes right here. Probably, to be honest with you, probably won't run down those filming locations for a long time though. But in the meantime, if you're curious to check those out, my good friends have made full detailed videos of those original A Nightmare on Elm Street locations, the 1984 classic. Shout out to Adam the Woo. He's made a full uh, length presentation of those location and also Sean Clark, two good dudes that I just linked up with back in Florida and we ran down the Jeepers Creepers filming locations together. So check out those videos if you're interested in seeing the original Nightmare. Uh, much ahead though, someday I do plan on seeing those because man, that is one of the scariest horror movies of all time, the original A Nightmare on Elm Street, Wes Craven classic. Back to part four. This will conclude the filming locations to part four. Thank you so much for joining me. If you enjoyed the locations, if you're a fan of part four, I hope you, I hope you like the video. Please give it a thumbs up and subscribe below if it was your first time. If you'd like to check out Loud Car, if you'd like to check out more of my filming locations, please check out the filming locations playlist on the main page of my YouTube channel. Had a fun time here in LA. I still got another video coming out very soon and uh, another filming location of the New Line Cinema. Didn't plan it, but I, uh, I did three, this trip, I did four videos. I've done three location videos of New Line Cinema Productions. And that, oddly enough, again, yes, I don't believe in coincidences, but that was a coincidence. So there you go, shout out to New Line Cinema, which is back over in Burbank, I believe. Uh, oh, I should bring that up. They filmed a lot of the interior set shots over at those studios. Um, so there you go. That being said, I'm in to get here at Nancy's house. There's much ahead. Thanks for watching, guys. Know you're awesome, know you're loved, and no matter who you are, what you're going through, every town has an Elm Street. And there's also much ahead. Bye-bye. Adios. Looks like they're mixing concrete on Elm Street. Oh, cool. That was the noise behind me, by the way, if you were curious. <laughs>